गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ बैंकिंग क्वेस्ट आई तिलक गुलाटी एक्सटेंड यू वॉम वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टूडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग ए ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू एथिक्स इन बैंकिंग This training program has been designed and structured into five modules of one and a half hour duration each. We shall be conducting this training online on Google Meet platform from 8 p.m. to 9:30 p.m. from today, 9th of April to 17th of April on each alternate day. Friends, it gives me immense pleasure to inform that today we have with us Mr. Mohan Tangsale. former chairman and managing director of central bank of india and also former chief executive officer of indian banks association after demitting the office of cmd central bank of india mr tansale occupied the prestigious position of chief executive officer indian banks association it is our great privilege that mr mohan tansale has kindly agreed to inaugurate this training program shri mohan tansale sir on behalf of the entire team of banking quest all the participants and all the dignitaries present here i extend you our heartiest welcome sir sir tansale sir you. before i request you to enrich us with your valuable inaugural address i would like to give a brief introduction to our organization banking quest one of the pre premier organization imparting training to the bank officials sir banking quest we here we are building the careers in banking our vision is to be the most preferred partner in bfsi segment for transformational skill development enabling organizations and individuals to achieve this goal and we have we work with the leading banks in the country to provide effective learning solutions for capacity and competence building we are reengineering skill we are reshaping the career we are regenerating the growth banking quest is founded by senior bankers with a proven track record with single minded focus of developing next generation bankers we pride ourselves on our distinctive and differentiated content and delivery with a focus on practical aspects of banking functions we work with the leading banks in the country to provide effective learning solutions with our pan india delivery capabilities we have on our advisory council we have mr mohan tansale our mentor former chairman and managing director central bank of india and former chief executive of indian banks association we have Um, professor rajiv kishor dubey our mentor former chairman and managing director canara bank we have mr bhaskar sen our mentor former chairman and managing director united bank of india we have mr hargobi sardev our mentor former general manager state bank of india and head of central european credit desk at frankfurt germany covering 15 countries of central europe and myself tilak gulati i am the chief executive and i am the former principal staff training college ucobe we have given training to more than 8000 bankers successfully and we have trained more than 25 banks including public sector banks or private sector banks payments banks and regional rural banks our participants fees that have continuously be more than 90% and we provide online bank inter interbank training programs and this online training program has received overwhelming response across banking fraternity we have capability to deliver both classroom and online training programs across india so all our programs are designed and developed based on in depth knowledge recently we have introduced new training programs training program on risk management in banks and nbfcs foreign exchange training program training program on msme credit credit management training program bank promotions training program treasury investment and risk management training program and the new is the introduction to ethics in banking so uh, we have got capabilities also we have got content specialization capabilities 
and all our programs are large scale pan india training we are doing roll out and our we have got pan india faculty pool our pool of faculty are experienced and credit faculty resources persons are having functional and operational experience in the banking domain we provide customized training solutions to all the banks so far we have given 11, we have given training to 11 large kind kinds and these are continuously growing to name we have given training to canara bank federal bank exim bank bank of baroda union bank of india punjab national bank yuko bank sbm bank india hindustan aeronautic limited bank of maharashtra and janata sahakari bank so friends you can meet out you can talk to us on this this is our address and this is our uh, contact details so now i request mr mohan tangsale sir former chairman and managing director central bank of india and former chief executive indian banks association to kindly enrich us with your valuable address to the participants about the role of ethics in the banking industry over to you sir thank you so much uh, mr gulati uh, my sincere thanks to you for uh, organizing uh, uh this program and all the speakers who will be uh imparting the knowledge to the participants and the biggest thanks to all the participants uh, who would be sparing their time on the uh evening time that to on the weekends so i really appreciate uh, uh uh your commitment to the cause i have gone through the uh the curriculum and i must appreciate that uh, the coverage of the program is uh, extremely good which covers the ethics in banking basic ethical principles ethical communication core values of banks ethical decision making character of a banker reputation of a bank trust and integrity and that's really great uh, let me tell you uh, having said that i strongly feel that it's most important in today's time the trust and integrity of the financial sector and i am sure every day day in day out for maybe last two three years we are reading in the newspaper that every time the trust and integrity of the financial sector gets challenged and thus this uh, subject really gets utmost importance uh, when you talk of the ethics in banking i will say that it should not be limited to the banking it should be the financial sector itself totally uh if you ask me the business is a social organ and business uh since the since uh, the pandemic has already done so much ill to the life society and business we as responsible members of the country should ensure that business should not be conducted in a way detrimental to the interest of the society and the business sector itself banking business is no exception to the principle and when we talk of this to be very frank to me ethics is not only the academic subject but it is a right culture a right conduct which starts with individual it is said you can be fool all others but you cannot be fool yourself and that is where it is very very important my dear friend that every conduct of yourself should give you signal whether you are ethically right or not and your own judgment uh, on this has to be honest to yourself uh, if you play with that uh, i think uh, the whole uh, uh, i mean the efforts are defeated and ultimately it is the ethical individuals who make the organization and thus uh, a strong organizational culture should get cultivated with the strong ethical values nurtured by the individuals from the organization that's very important i am sure everybody in the bank looks at others looks at the bosses looks at the leaders what is he doing i, I always used to say that so many families are watching us if i am leading financial bank 
40,000 families were watching us. Central Bank, 30, 35,000 families watching us. And that's where probably the, the lessons of the ethics, uh, uh, it uh, starts with the individuals. And uh, as you say, the charity begins at home. I think the ethics begin with you as an individual. That's the most important part. One has to learn about it. One has to agree, yes, this is what's important. And then probably you can get into certain uh, uh, knowledge-based and academic-based activities, uh, which you are going to learn for all these seven days. Uh, bankers as trustee should be very conscious of the fact that every right or wrong decision of a banker has an impact on the entire stakeholders, be it depositors, be it borrowers, be it investors, and the society at large. When you talk of stakeholders, kindly don't confine yourself to only depositors and borrowers, uh, but it is the society which really gets impacted. And at this point of time, I am tempted to give one quote from Marathi. Uh, you might have heard that uh, there was a saint called Samartha Ramdas, who was also guru of Shivaji. He said, Jani nindate te soduna deave, Jani vendate bhave karave. It means give up what is not appreciated by the society at large and adopt which is in the interest of the public good. I think this is a very basic principle which he probably gave in 1700 uh, or so. And that is what one has to be very, very cautious of. What, what am I doing? Am I doing something which will be accepted at large for the public good or it will not be? And put yourself into the shoes of the public. Probably you will get the proper answer of what <laughs> you are looking at. And in that... Uh, context, I'll take that uh, discussion further, that business ethics is generally coming to know what is right or wrong in the workplace and doing what is right. I think ethics is a business, ethics in business involves a conscious effort to adopt business practices in the interest of society and environment without giving the objective of making profits. Ultimately, we are all from the business uh, the ultimate objective is that I make a profit. But then if I make a profit ethically, it's more important to me as a business organization, as a banking industry. And that's what I like to uh, touch on the very vital issue, which I would like Mr. Gulati to cover it. Uh, uh, that is the Global Sustainability Development Goals. Let me tell you that Global Sustainability Development Goals which are adopted by all country, including India, are around how exactly the financial sector should work for the, the good of the society. That includes financial inclusion, that includes the various responsibilities towards the ESG. So I will suggest you that while I was in the IBA, we had engaged with the United Nations and uh, uh, another German company called GIZ and worked extensively on creating the voluntary guidelines of responsible finance. These guidelines are very much available on the website of the IBA. What these guidelines really say and address is the issues of the ESG, that is environment, society and governance. And let me tell you, Mr. Gulati and all of us who are participants here, that if you are addressing these issues, you are actually addressing the, the ethical part in a larger way. I mean, the simple thing, I mean, when you talk of uh, sustainability, uh, you talk of a climate, uh, you should not be financing something which is impacting the climate, which is impacting the environment, something which is impacting the society or the governance part of it. And that is where I very strongly feel that uh, this part of, uh, uh, I mean, the voluntary guidelines for the responsible finance can be touched base uh, towards the end of the session if it is possible. I'm very clear that none of these ethical practices are deterrent to the growth. Otherwise, the moment what happens, uh, we, we issue the 
circulars do this do, do not do this and it becomes a deterrent but let me tell you none of the ethical practices are deterrent to the growth in credit rather should help you in taking the informed qualitative credit decision i repeat informed qualitative credit decision when you are able to take informed qualitative credit decision basically you are doing a good and there i will i am always tempted to tell don't forget that lending is a basic dharma of a banker it should not happen that after five, doing five days course you develop an aversion because we are all been talked about about aversion in credit growth by the bankers and that is why i thought i will bring out this point that basically knowing this subject should really encourage you to take informed qualitative credit decision and don't forget that lending is a basic term of a banker because banking is a lifeline of an economy always bear in mind that banking is a lifeline of an economy then banks they run on the public trust and in turn function on ethical principles and moral values they follow the world is witness to the numerous bank failures small and large which could not withstand the rigor of a public trust i think we got many example in india itself we need not look at the global part many banks have faced this issue one of the bank which got merged with the obc is called the global trust bank that trust is a word but the trust was lost and the ethical principle that banks follow have to be on a higher order than those followed by any other business for the simple reason that we are dealing in money and i think that's the most important part which i'll suggest you to all keep it in mind at the same time ethics in the banking describes banks to operate around a set of principles and ideals that are used to govern how they interact with clients their community and the world at large so what you are going to learn for all these uh, five or seven days uh, what mr gulati has put up the session for you is on the best of the 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 principles and the governance principles uh, on the interaction with the clients the community and the world at large i'll give you a simple example that we as a banker have responsibility to support the large corporates at the same time we have responsibility to see that we are participating in the financial inclusion it means i must equally care for a microfinance borrower as i care for the large corporate today unfortunately i understand that the interactions with the uh, the customers have reduced substantially again because of little aversions i i think if you want to take a qualitative informed decision you must know your customer better only through the interactions and that is where your engagement uh, with the customers have to really go here i would like to say that it is the ethical culture which will attract the good customers because the moment message goes that this bank nurtures the great values this bank employs respect the great ethical values let me tell you your customer retention customer attraction of the right kind of customers will automatically grow today all of us are in a situation where we have to face the challenges of customer retention Uh, we always talk of customer re uh, retention, and I like the word what uh, Mr. Gulati said: the preferred institution. I always used to tell my branch manager that, "Are you a preferred banker for your customer? And how can you be a preferred banker to customer unless you are actually taking care of the customer, 360 degree requirements and ethically." most important part i'll again emphasize that this has got to be kept in mind now friends before i close uh, the inaugural address let me some submit something very sensational and i like to submit that all bankers face the professional hazard of facing the three c's cbc cbi 
<laughs> so you don't have to really uh, uh, worried about it. this is called a professional hazard a person who is talking to you has also gone to these institutions couple of times not to worry about it it does not mean that those bankers who have been questioned by cbc or cbc cbi have not followed the ethical values they all have followed ethical values and that is why the consequences have not been there it's a, it's a part of a profession the inquiries are going to be conducted somebody has to participate somebody has to give the information and there were let me tell you i have i remember my guru uh, i will like to refer the name mr r venkat ramani who taught me credit in my early days in union bank of india he said mohan even if you murder if you are required to murder write down why it means when you take a decision you must write down the points why you have taken such credit decision this is what is an ethic which talks of transparency and disclosures because in the ethics transparency is the most important part disclosure is the most important part so if i am required to take a credit decision i must write down even if i am at times taking a deviations we are in the business of taking decision no decision can be perfect unless deviations are respected and deviations are taken care of but then this is what uh, is required to be always bear in mind and why i thought it is necessary to mention here that after completing the session you should be enriched with the knowledge and should get encouraged to take the informed credit decision informed qualitative credit decision and that is what should be the output which should benefit you as a banker and your bank as a organization and you can spread this message uh, uh, let me tell you uh, across uh, uh, your organization and uh, uh, i i feel uh, very happy that uh, such a good subject uh, a good number of participants are joining and uh, they will be spreading this message and uh, i am sure that uh, it's not only you your organization but the society at large will get benefited i think this is what is from my end i sincerely thank mr gulati for giving this opportunity and uh, share my thoughts thank you very much mr gulati thank you sir thanks a lot thanks for enriching the participants and for to all of us about the role of ethics in the banking industry sir you have rightly said ethics is not academic but it is a culture and ethics ethics brings with you and as an individual and put yourself we should put ourselves in the shoes of the public only then we will come to know what is the importance of ethics sir i have also noted your guidance your advice that we will take care of the global sustainability development goals and we will incorporate in this training program no you have that voluntary guidelines uh, of the iba yeah. where every sustainability goal 6 8 10 have been properly addressed so how exactly by taking proper decision you are addressing each of those sustainability goals sure sir we we will do it we will we will uh, we will try to incorporate in this training program itself yeah yeah, yeah. yeah sir thank you and uh, we have with us mr hargovin sachdev former general manager state bank of india uh, sir is also mentor to the banking quest sir is presently uh, speaking from toronto canada so i request hargovin sachdev to sir to kindly say a word of thanks to sir mohan tansali sir vardi uh, mohan tansali sir it has been an amazing opening address which has set the tone for this ethical conference we are really indebted to you you have a long track record of honesty which you displayed as the ceo of central bank and put it as one of the leading banks in india and then as a leader of all the bankers as head of indian banks association you led us with dexterity 
farsightedness and place the organization where it is today a key uh, negotiator with the government so we thank you very much for enlightening thoughts there is absolutely no doubt that the banking stands on four pillars of honesty integrity truth and trust and trust which comes in the end is earned after practicing truth honesty and integrity so we will certainly like to uh, imbibe the best guidelines of ethics which you suggested we totally agree with you sir that it is easy to fool uh, others you know but we cannot fool ourselves because our soul our mind our heart you know pinches if we uh, try to deceive others and it is the victory on our ourselves that will make us ultimate victors defeating others is very easy but uh, winning ourselves is the main thing which ethics Correct. teaches you are right no doubt that uh, as you rightly said that uh, lending is the dharma of bankers and it should be done with clean hands and it should be done with total due diligence after taking into account his cash flow his business profile his integrity his past his future prospects and various economic conditions obtaining at the time of taking credit decision sir you said that be honest to yourself i think that is the essence of this seminar and that is what we are going to cultivate uh, through banking i uh, quest that we have to be honest to ourselves then only the decision making will be proper sir you also said that it is ethical individuals who make the organization uh, not the organization which makes ethical individuals because brick by brick individual build an organization which becomes a darling or a hatred uh, spot for the masses we have seen as you said global trust bank despite carrying the name of trust in its name could not sustain <laughs> your guidance on global sustainability goals uh, is a very well uh, thought out suggestion which i'm sure mr gulati uh, will hold dear to his heart when he announces his next seminar because that is the next uh, stage after this seminar which we'll be doing uh, in the next 5 days sir you have been uh, you know a light uh, for the masses for the bankers i will only say in your honor that koi na puche inke kad ka andaaz mohan sir koi na puche aapke kad ka andaaz himalay se uche hain fir bhi sir jhukaye baithe hain thank you very much for coming and addressing us sir thank you thank you so much thank you i am one of you dear and uh, uh, have courage uh, uh, to be a strong banker uh, with all these values which you imbibe i am sure you will emerge as a very good banker thank you so much once again thank, thank you sir. thank you sir thank you mohan taksale sir thank you hargobi sir dev thank you all the dignitaries so after this first inaugural session let us start the first session business ethics and friends this first session will be deliberated by mr hargobin sachdev for former general manager state bank of india